My new book is about a new method of measuring family effects on a variety of cognitive abilities, ranging all the way from vocabulary through general information, through block design, through picture arrangement. And this new method tells you exactly at what age family stops influencing your cognitive ability and other things take over like peers and schooling and what have you. And it also helps settle something very important in the literature. That is, the twin studies make it appear that heredity or genes are all important. And this book discusses the extent to which your family either can favor or handicap you as you go to university and also your personal autonomy as an adult, whether you can do anything during your adult years to upgrade your mental abilities. It starts out that family is terribly important before you go to school. That is, family for at least abilities like vocabulary, arithmetic. Uh, the family is terribly important before you go to school. Indeed, parents try to be so just as to give the same environment to their more and less talented children. And then once you get to school, the cognitive abilities that you don't see your parents displaying, like block design, which is sort of a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle, these decay very quickly. But things that your parents use around you, they can be significantly influenced by family up through 17. A vocabulary is a very strong example. Probably the cognitive skill that family stays influential for the longest period. Well, up through about 20, your family fades compared to genetic influences on your environment. Obviously, family loses out to school and peers. And you tend to make school mates and peers your friends pretty much on the same intellectual level as yourself. And so family fades. But throughout your life, right to death, 20% of IQ variance is determined by what they call chance factors things that are not correlated with genes, nor correlated with family. Uh, whether you were dropped on your head as a kid, whether you have a traffic accident that gives you trauma, whether you have an enervating divorce, whether you lose a job and become unemployed, all of these have positive and negative effects on your mental abilities, quite significant throughout your life. And you can make your own luck. This is one of the things I stress. Uh, just as you could be thrown out of a job by chance, it may be that you decide you're going to try and get a better job that's more cognitively demanding. Just as you might have to leave university because your parents run out of money, you could at the age of 40 make a positive decision to go back to university in order to upgrade your intelligence. So really, chance environment divides into two chances that are imposed on you without your having any say, and the luck that you make because you exercise your human autonomy and want to function better intellectually. I think it will do two things. First, it will banish post-twin pessimism, where people feel, gee, genes get more and more important as you age. By the time you're 15 or 20 or 30, you're just functioning on whatever level your genes predestined anyway. And they will find the conclusions that I draw that even at the age of 17, family could be a boon or a handicap. And even at the age of 40, you have a great deal of human autonomy to exercise. I think they'll find this surprising, but I also think they will find the new method that I'm using to measure family effects important. It's a new method that doesn't require expensive twin studies or adoption studies, but can be used with the data that appears in IQ test manuals. And finally, I think they'll find of interest the section I have at the end on the enemy of on, pardon me, on the theory of intelligence. Because up to now I've clarified IQ progress over time. And this book, of course, clarifies individual differences at a given time. 
And when you put the two together, you get a much more coherent theory of intelligence.